Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's topic uh, was requested by one of our viewers, Iron Ore. So here you go, this is for you. And the topic is how to sharpen teeny tiny little carbide end mills. We happen to have two uh, ways that we can sharpen little end mills. Uh, one is the air bearing, the easy way. The other is the sensitive work head, and this is the hard way. I've gathered up some quarter inch diameter solid carbide uh, end mills here. We've got a two flute, which isn't in too bad a shape, a three flute, which is really messed up near the end, and then we've got a four flute that is just totaled down by the end. So we're gonna sharpen these up. I think what we're gonna do is uh, we'll do two of them the easy way in the air bearing, and then just to demonstrate, we'll do one of them the hard way in the sensitive work head. We're gonna start by sharpening the sides of the end mills and then work our way to the end later. And the reason for that is that the damage is normally worse towards the end of end mills. And by doing the sides first, you can choose at which point to stop removing damage. And, uh, and then you can just bring the end up accordingly. Whereas if you were to do the end first, then you're committed at removing any damage that's there. And it may be that that damage is actually deeper than what you wanted to remove. We're going to be taking off the absolute minimum amount we can to make this thing sharp again. And the reason is that this tooth face here, out near the outside, there's a positive rake because of the radius in this thing. As you pass through the middle, you get to sort of a zero rake. And if you go too far, not only are you really running low on flute altogether at that point, but you're also getting yourself a, a bit of a negative rake on the face, which is no good. Iron Ore has asked that we include as much detail as possible. So we're going to do that. So I may, if I may recommend, grab yourself a snack or a beverage. Make sure your wife has something nice to be doing because she's not going to want to watch this. <laughs> so as we go, we're going to be discussing the differences between using the air bearing as opposed to the sensitive workhead. And uh, right away, there's a couple big differences I'd like to, to mention. One is that the air bearing gives you straight automatically. You get that for free. It doesn't even have to be straight. You could have it at an angle, but it's still gonna pass your tool by the wheel in a straight line, and it's gonna make your tool be parallel. Whereas with the sensitive work head, all that's on you. Lots more dialing with the sensitive work head. I've thrown my end mill in a, in a collet here, and uh, the first thing I wanna do before I get doing anything else is uh, to check and see with my test dial approximately how much relief do I have across the primary clearance angle because you're going to want to cre recreate that now it doesn't have to be perfectly exactly the same but you're going to want to get it as close as you can this is also a good opportunity to make sure that your tools are running pretty true in there and uh, in the event it isn't you can probably tweak it just a little bit by pulling on it next thing we're going to want to do here is to get our tool pointer roughly set up and so it needs to go in there on that tooth face. It can't be touching in the back. You also don't want it dragging down the face of the tooth because that'll you know, cause you to dull it you know, while you're trying to sharpen it. So it's a bit of a fine bounce and the, it gets more difficult as these diameters get smaller. But I've got that somewhere, I'm pretty happy with it there now. And the next thing I'm gonna do is set the stop at the back of my air bearing so that as I reach the back of this flute, I'll hit a stop and that'll be the end of travel. Next, we should talk about uh, wheel selection. Of course, it's got to be a diamond wheel and uh, it's going to vary depending on the wheel you have and the machine you have. Now, uh, some, some people, some machines are going to want to use a cup wheel on there and uh, other setups could use a plain style wheel. Uh, one thing you, you would want to avoid is trying to have a wide surface like this while you're grinding because then you, you, you're never really going to know where on here you're contacting. It's, it's just going to make things a lot more difficult. So I happen to have this wheel that's just about perfect for this. Uh, this wheel was actually originally manufactured wrong. They, they put the aluminum both on the inside and on the back side so neither surface can properly be used um, and anyways I'm going to use basically this corner so by having that nice fairly sharp corner there it's going to allow me to know exactly where my grinding wheel is contacting 
my end mill and that's going to be very important so whatever wheel you choose you really want to keep you want to be cutting on a line more than a great big flat surface now that i've picked my wheel i want to get it on there and i want it uh, running true as true as possible i don't want it slapping away i'd like a nice even consistent rub as much as possible so all my diamond wheels have these four opposing marker marks on them and what i do is i go from one to the other back and forth and i get it running as close to zero as i can it's a really good idea to lift your stylus as you're going from one mark to the next and uh, the reason is if you if you're just dragging that on there you're gonna wear flat on the end of your stylus and, and nobody wants a flat on the end of their stylus this next step is actually super important we're going to want to position our pointer finger uh, in relation to the part of our wheel that's going to do the cutting. And we're definitely going to want the point of our finger to this side of the cutting edge. And the reason for that is we, we want to be able to control um, the rotation of our end mill until it's completely off the wheel. Here's the point on my stylus that's going to contact the face of the tooth and over here is the part of the wheel that's going to do the cutting. And while that is super important, there is a bit of give and take to it because your pointer is going to bottom out at the back of your flute slightly before your grinding wheel is grinding at the back of your flute. So we are going to lose a wee bit of a cutting length here. And essentially, it's going to be about the same amount that you've offset this point from the part of the wheel that's doing the cutting. The next thing we want to do now is adjust the height of our wheel and or the height of our pointer finger so that the edge of the wheel that's doing the cutting matches the clearance angle that we're wanting to recreate. Now, I do this essentially by trial and error. I come onto my pointer finger lift my tool and then I just slowly or I rotate the wheel by hand until I just hear it touch. You hear it just touch there. Now I'm going to come out, I'm going to come off and I'm going to use my magnifying glass to see where I've touched that and to determine if I've got the right clearance angle or if, uh, if I'm lessening it or if I'm increasing it then I'll, I will adjust. This last part of the setup can be pretty darn grueling. I mean, there's going to be, you're going to run into all kinds of uh, clearance issues because everything's so small and so tight and close together. Um, I would say just, uh, you know, stick with it, step back, take a break, uh, come back to it when you're, when you're in the mood. Um, but eventually, trial and error and uh, fine tuning, you'll get where you want to be. Now, I don't even know if you can see this, but if you, Look really, really closely here. I've painted these clearance angles with marker so that I have a hope of being able to see what I'm doing. And if you look, where did it go now? Right there, you can see I've just scraped the primary clearance angle and I'm pretty much evenly scraping from the leading edge to the trailing edge. And so we'll take a couple passes, we'll check with the test dial, but that should be very, very close to recreating exactly what primary clearance angle was on there to start with. So we're ready to go now. I am going to uh, fire up the motor and uh, I want to hear, I won't be able to see or feel, so I want to hear uh, that I'm just touching off and then we'll turn on our dust collector. So there, I've just barely touched it and if you look real carefully, you can see we're uh, pretty much creating the same primary clearance that was on there, certainly quite close. We are increasing that clearance angle 
ever so slightly. I mean, I might have gone a quarter thou after I touched and we're a good, I don't know, halfway across there. So we're not changing the angle by much. And with all the clearance issues, I'm just gonna say I'm happy with that. Now for roughing this thing down, uh, I am turning my wheel in this direction. So all my cutting pressure is forcing the cutting edge down onto the pointer. So it's sort of a safety factor. Now, when we get to wanting to finish though, super important that we reverse our wheel because right now the wheel is cutting down across the cutting edge and it's gonna not burr it, but it's gonna fracture it ever so slightly. And by running the wheel backwards, it's gonna be cutting into the cutting edge and it'll, be, it'll end up being a whole lot sharper. If you look in here, you can see that we're not cleaning up all the way to the back of the tooth as expected. That's just, uh, just the way it goes uh, with this type of setup. tool was running out uh, about a half a thou and you're seeing that here where one tooth is uh, cleaned up quite a bit and uh, another one here is just barely touching but uh, that was as true as I could get it to run and honestly a, a half a thou is not the end of the world. get too far along here I am going to check with my test dial and make sure that I'm happy with the amount of relief that I'm creating and that it's pretty close to what this thing started at and uh, I am happy with that so we can carry on. So we're all the way around this thing a couple times we're maybe a thou, thou and a half into it. I want to take this opportunity now to feel each of these leading edges and feel for damage. I can't actually see very well but I can feel, like I can feel a spot here, feels pretty small, we're probably gonna to wanna to take that out. I just wanna get an idea here for how far we wanna go and uh, how much diameter we wanna remove. And so now that I have sort of an idea, I'm gonna carry on. got the damage out of it there. Um, this is a three flute so we can't really measure it properly to see how much that you know we've taken off but it's it's only a few thou that I took off in order to remove all the damage but it's not right sharp. If you take a look at this it's like kind of sharp but it's it's not right sharp. We could do we could do way better than that. So we're going to reverse our wheel and now this is when things get sort of maximum sketchy because if this were to get away from you your tool would dig deeper into the wheel and you would just make a complete mess of the whole thing so this is the most sort of by the seat of your pants part of this whole thing but it's super important that you do it so i would say just really hang on to her and try not to let it get away from you
I've made a couple uh, rotations around. I've only gone about another thousandths of an inch, but and I'm hoping this shows up. But now, this is like right sharp. Can't really tell. Do that again. I mean, it's these, these flays of plastic are coming off real easy now, real smooth. That's sharp. Well, we've got all the damage out. I'm very happy that it's nice and sharp now. Uh, I'm going to double check that I have clearance all the way off the back. And we certainly do. I think the next thing to determine is do we want to put a secondary clearance angle on this? And I'm actually not going to. I, I feel that that primary clearance angle is uh, short enough rotationally that I don't need to put a secondary clearance on. Now, if I did want to put a secondary clearance on, it'd be a simple matter of, of loosening this pointer and rotating it around, and then my whole setup would rotate around, and we could put a secondary clearance angle on it. But I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm perfectly happy with this the way it is. So this guy's nice and sharp on the sides. I'm going to put it aside. We're going to work on its end uh, probably in another video. Uh, but the beauty of this setup is I could take another similar end mill, uh, just throw it in here, and really the only thing that I need to do any adjusting to is my end of travel stop back here. But as far as all my clearances, my angles that I'm, I'm creating, that's all going to remain the same. So that's pretty slick. If you, although this pay, the setup was a real pain in the neck, if you had a whole bag of little end mills, once you're set up and rolling, you could just process them all through very quickly. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If, uh, if there's anything I missed going over, if there's any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to answer as best I'm able to. Now, uh, by the time these are done, it's going to be probably three videos. The, the next video we're going to do is sharpening end mills using the sensitive work head, which is by far the hardest, most miserable way you could ever sharpen an end mill. And uh, so we'll do that next. And then once we've gotten through that, we'll do a video on how to actually handle fixing the ends of these guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. That didn't make sense.